Hi, Dr. Detail. What are you up to? Well, in a series of videos, I did some tests on things like pixel size, aperture, and focal length, and I found that pixel size determines SNR. Having a pixel size that is four times the area only gives you two times the SNR. A pixel with four times the area should have the same noise as a smaller pixel, but it doesn't. In fact, some of my viewers pointed out the shot noise must be doing something weird, maybe based on crazy quantum mechanics. They claim that shot noise should be the same no matter what the pixel size is. And so if my results are correct, I must have discovered something big. So I'm writing a scientific journal article and I'm going to get it peer reviewed to stop writing. What? You're wasting your time. You haven't found anything. Your shot noise results are exactly what you'd predict without any fancy quantum mechanics. But are you sure? Positive. Here, let me explain. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. All right, so why do you think things are weird and you need to write a paper about it? Shot noise is one of the most important concepts in photography, especially astrophotography. I think it's important to get the details correct, and shot noise can be explained without any fancy quantum effects. Well, okay, let's talk statistics. Sure. Let's say that I want to take a sample of 100 people and find their ages. In traditional statistics, assuming a normal distribution... Wait a minute. Let me explain things to the audience first. If you aren't familiar with statistics, a normal distribution is usually displayed as a plot that represents some measurement. A well-behaved normal distribution makes a bell curve, where the top of the bell curve is the average of the distribution. Which is what we usually want to know, right? Yes. A lot of science is just taking thousands and thousands of measurements to figure out where their average of the distribution is. But not every measurement is near the average. Yes, that's correct. This is variation. This can be due to measurement error, inherent noise in the system, differences between people. W wait, what? Differences between people? Yes. Were you talking about normal distribution and people? Oh, yeah, right. OK, so listen, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this. Let's say that I want to figure out the average age of people in the United States. There's like 300 to 400 million people here. I can't ask everyone. So I could sample of like 500 people at random. The average age would be something like 38 years old. That would be, as you said, the middle of the distribution. We can measure the spread of the distribution using something like standard deviation, which, which is a way of assessing how far the individual measurements are from the average. Could you explain how all of these measurements make a normal distribution? I think it would help people unfamiliar with statistics. A normal distribution is just a histogram, meaning a graph or plot of how something is measured. So if we sample one person and find that their age is 37, we would go on the x-axis of the graph, find 37, and put a little rectangle with a height of 1. We can then sample more and more people, stacking rectangles on top of each other if we need to. The height of the stacked rectangles tells us how many people there are of a specific age. Most measurements of people's attributes create some sort of histogram. The middle of the histogram is the average. The spread of the distribution can be represented by a statistic known as standard deviation. Thanks. You're welcome. Where was I? You were saying that if you measured 500 people's age. Oh, yeah. So this is the critical part. Let's say we found that the average age is 37 and the standard deviation is 13. So that would mean that about 95 percent of the distribution is between between 11 and 63. That range of ages, that 95% confidence interval we have is independent of the number of people in our sample. On average, the shot noise of age should be around 13 if we had 100 people in our sample or two people in our sample. Okay, but how does this relate to shot noise and pixel size? Well, the noisiness of a pixel shouldn't depend on the size of the pixel, right? A small pixel should have just as much noise as a large pixel, but the larger pixel has more signal. A pixel that is four times the area should have four times the signal to noise ratio than the smaller pixel. Or maybe it's the same because the total light is the same. I don't know. But the result is that the shot noise shouldn't depend on pixel size. It should. You haven't proven anything what? with your example. I don't understand. 
Okay, let me give you another example. Do you know where babies come from? <laughs> I guess. I think most people do. Well, it's not storks. That's a myth. Really, they get spat out of the Orion Nebula and fly to Earth at a trillion light years per second until they smash into their parents' That's arms. That's not how babies... Quiet. I'm not talking about imaginary human babies like you. I'm talking about real people babies like me. Oh. So, you want to know how many babies land on Earth in a given year in a given area? Okay, that sounds a lot like detecting photons. Hush! So we have an area of one mile by one mile. On average, there are 500 stick figures that land on Earth for every square mile every year. That is in the middle of the distribution, but the spread of the distribution roughly follows a normal distribution. But it's not quite normal. It's a Poisson distribution. That doesn't matter as much. I still don't understand. Just wait. Each year, sometimes 500 stick figures land in the area. Sometimes it's 527, sometimes 600, but the average is 500. It follows this distribution where the standard deviation is the square root of 500. So for fun, let's divide 500 divided by the square root of 500 to get 22.4. That's a good number. That's our average to standard deviation ratio or the average to noise ratio. But what makes this example different than the age example is that the measurement we are measuring is the number of measurements. I still don't understand. All these measurements measuring measurements is confusing. Okay, with finding the noise for people's age, what was the measurement? So is this a trick question? No. The age of the people. Is age the same thing as number of people you're measuring? No, this has got to be a trick question. No. Of course age isn't the number of people I'm measuring. There you go. Problem solved. Thanks for watching. No, stop. I don't understand. Yeah, I didn't think you would. Admittedly, 500 is a big number. Let's make things smaller. Let's say there is only one birth per year per square mile. The average to noise ratio in this case is one. It still follows a Poisson distribution. Okay. Focus. Now let's split up the square mile into four equal sections. Why don't we just call them subpixels? There is one person being born each year in, in the total area. But assuming each person born has an equal chance of landing in each subpixel, how many people are born on average in each subpixel each year? Uh, one fourth of a person? Yeah, but can one fourth of a person be born? No, I don't think so. Correct. So for most years, most of the subpixels will have zero people being born in them. Now let's create infinite subpixels and keep in mind each stick figure baby when they land on Earth is infinitely small. You can't see them in real life. They're sort of like fairies, so you can't disprove we exist. Anyway, what is the probability now that any given subpixel will have a baby born? Uh, Zero? Correct. At a certain point, the number of subpixels becomes greater than the number of babies born because your measurement is the number of measurements you measure and not some other strange variable like age. The noise is totally dependent on the number of measurements you measure. When you start dividing up the area you're measuring, you're also dividing up a limited number of measurements. You can't have as much noise in each of the subpixels because you don't have as many measurements. The noise is the average. In other words, the noise is always related to the signal. Well, the square root of it anyway. Okay, so let's relate this back to photography. If I have a camera that has infinitely small pixels, that would mean most of the pixels would always be black, assuming the camera doesn't have other types of noise. The probability that a photon would hit any given pixel would be minuscule. So the signal for all these infinitely small pixels would average out to zero. But the noise for most pixels would also approach zero because most of the time they're never measuring anything. That sounds good and all, but can you prove it? I, I don't believe you. Yes, you're catching on. So let's do some simulations. I'll make some code and visualize it. All right. Here on the right is our one square mile area. Let's measure how many stick babies are born in one year. Like before, we'll assume that the distribution follows a Poisson distribution with an average of 500. In year one, we get 485 babies. We'll start making a histogram here on the right. As we observe for more and more years, the histogram starts to fill up and look like the original Poisson distribution. Notice I'm keeping track of the mean and standard deviation of the histogram. Now, as we look at the distribution from thousands of years of data, we can see that the center of the distribution is around 500. 
and the range of most likely number of births in a year is between 457 and 554. That means the error, as measured by the standard deviation, is 21 to 22. It wouldn't be surprising to see 44 fewer births or 44 more births. Rarely, but sometimes, you'll see a number of births outside that range. Okay, but now, this is where things get weird. Shot noise is weird. The noise is going to decrease for each pixel. It will look as if the noise is correlated with the size of the pixel. So let's divide up our square mile into four equal chunks of subpixels. See these four subpixels? We'll record how many births happen in each of them. We'll assume that a baby doctor detail has an equal chance of landing anywhere within the square mile. On the left, I'll put four more histograms and do exactly what we did before. Record the number of births for each square, put it in the corresponding histogram and watch as the histograms fill up. But before we start, what do you think the noise will be in each subpixel? For the larger square mile pixel, it was 22. Well, we don't have as many baby doctor details being born in each subpixel. So the signal will be 100 divided by 4, which is 125. And I would guess that the noise would also probably decrease by 4. So around 6 or 7. That's a good guess. Let's examine 5,000 years worth of data. Huh. The noise is about 11. That's more than I expected. Yep, you had a good guess. The noise for the larger pixel was 22-ish. But when we went to four smaller pixels, the noise only decreases by two. Basically, a baby doctor detail can land in four places instead of just one. That adds an additional element of randomness to the system. Now replace all the doctor details with photons and you can see how bigger pixels in a camera work in photography. But wait! That's exactly the opposite of doubling the aperture of your telescope. When you double the aperture, keeping the focal length the same, you increase the signal by four and decrease the noise by two. When you divide a pixel into four pixels, you decrease the signal by four and decrease the noise by two. Very good. So if you're going to make an analogy then, light hitting the Earth is to telescope aperture as light entering a telescope is to pixel size. Very good. Bigger pixels gather more light, just like bigger telescopes gather more light. This is something that people have a hard time wrapping their heads around. They will easily accept that a bigger mirror or lens gathers more light and results in higher signal to noise ratio. But if you tell them the same is true about bigger pixels or binning, they have a hard time. So if I'm doing a collaboration with three other people and we all have eight inch F10 scopes, then our individual data would be kind of noisy. However, however, if we averaged all of our data together, it would be like doubling the aperture. Yes, but only if you average all your data together. And if I have a camera with two micron pixels, then four individual pixels would be noisy. But if I bend them two by two for a four micron pixel, it'd be like doubling my aperture in terms of signal to noise ratio. Yes, but only if you bend but you would be losing resolution in the process, and that might not be a worthwhile trade-off sometimes. Huh. Interesting. I hope it helped. It sure did. Thanks, Dr. Detail. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I know this one is a bit esoteric, but I've had several comments in my other videos not fully getting why shot noise acts like it does. I hope this explained it better, but I've got more videos that take a more in-depth look at aperture and focal length with equations that back it up if you'd like to learn more about how pixel size relates to those things. Thanks for watching.